Hello everyone, welcome to a vlog. Today, I'm so out of breath, you're gonna have to get used to this. <sighs> I don't usually start my vlogs here in the bathroom, but it's the afternoon, we've got a really chilled one, we've got no plans, and I was like, I feel like today is a good day to start vlogging again. And I have already, this morning, done my SPF, BTW, this super goop glow screen, I love it. And then I literally just put a tiny bit of my Arborean BB cream on, but I'm just doing a little top up. I get, <laughs> I had this in my pregnancy with Oddie. It's already happening in this pregnancy too. And I wear SPF like every day. So I don't know how it's happening, but it does just happen. I get like dark on my top lip, um, like kind of discoloration. And yeah, I had that last time and I seem to be getting it again this time. And I think it's caused by the sun. So even though I've got my SPF on, it's maybe because I had it last time, it's just, it comes back way easier. I don't know. Firstly, I just want to say thank you so much for all of your gorgeous, lovely, supportive, kind, thoughtful messages on the news of our second baby. Obviously Alfie and I have had a couple of days to like read them all and like digest the fact that this is now like a thing we can openly talk about, which is really nice. It's a really, really nice feeling. I haven't got my everyday makeup bag in here, but I do have like my, my overflow makeup bag. So, I just want a little bit of, put some of this rare beauty on. As I said, I'm not gonna go crazy today, but I'm literally, I've just washed my hands. That's pretty. Nice, gonna put a little bit more of my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Lip Oil my lips have been so dry. I think it's just the sun. And you know what? I might just leave it at this. Got a little authored brow gel in here as well. So I may as well just brush this through. Okay. I might leave it like this. I think we're going for a less is more today. Bit of BB cream, little bit of blush brush through my brows and a little bit of lip oil. I really want to like get into how I've been the last like three months. And I feel like maybe like a little bit further on in the video, I'll talk a lot more about the anxiety side of things and like what happened there because I'm still like working through that. That's definitely not something that's like fully back to how it was prior to being pregnant. Um, aware that it's probably a bit of a slow train, but I am moving forward um, and I'm very pleased with the progress that I'm currently making, but I do feel like it would be a really interesting thing to talk about because I know that mental health in, um... Hello. 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 Cheese. Cheese. Uh, Otty's been painting in the garden. <gasps> Look at your t-shirt. Ah, uh, uh, You want to brush your teeth? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, maybe. <laughs> okay, I'll teach the turn. I'll teach you do it. Ten. Yep. Yeah. I'll do it. Okay. Brushing your teeth then. Bye then. I have completely forgotten where I was, but. Up. Oh, you want to get back up? Yep. So I will chat about the like anxiety up. side of things um, at some point Down. in this video. Down. But. Ooh, for now, <laughs> it's a Friday afternoon and I think we're going to just chill, maybe make some ice cream, sit in the garden, have fun. We have no plans this afternoon. 
So we are making the most of it. Also, I was on a shoot yesterday and Adam did my hair. Oh my God. He used a tong, like a curling <laughs> wand. And I actually I have the curling wand. No, no. And I just can't get my hair to look like this, but I just want this to last as long as possible because I love it so much. It's like proper like mermaid uh, uh, waves. Uh, Have you finished? Yeah. I think that's a spider. Oh, it's a spider, isn't it? Uh, 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 oh, did it move? It's okay, it's friendly. She says when she doesn't like spiders. <laughs> How do you not pass on <laughs> fears of things to your kids? <laughs> look, the spider's nice. Oh God. Ah, look. Say hello, spider. Hello, spider. Hello, spider. <laughs> oh, he's got some legs missing. Poor spider. Poor spider. He's lost some legs. Look at that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can <laughs> Can you count his legs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ow. Oh, be careful. Okay, spider. Oh, spider. he's okay. okay. I also don't think oh, he's got no. 10 legs. I think he's oh, only no. got, he's only got six legs by the looks of it. Let's leave him there. Let's go outside and play with the water, shall we? Because it's such a hot day. Shoes and hat. Shoes and hat. Yep. That's right. That's right. Oh, hello, daddy. <laughs> Hello, what's his name? Spider! Spider! Are you playing with a spider? Yeah. Did he have ten legs? Yeah! Wow! Where did he get the extra ones? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> did he get them from the shop? Did he buy them from the shop? Yeah! That's cool! That's cool! Should we put this one on? I feel like it's much brighter down here. Right, I've got these two drawers. Um, these are actually from Ikea. They, they come in either like, I think you just buy them in packs like this because you can either put them in the like drawer system or they have a little activity table which Ottie has that these have come out of. So we're gonna put some, whoa, whoa, that was close. So we're gonna put some water in so you can play outside in the water, yeah? Outside. Get water. Get water. Yeah. You know she's just going to mm -hmm. sit in this so quickly. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. There we go. Yeah, I give it three minutes and she'll be sat in it. It was Pretty more for like it was more for like transferring water from from each one with some little cups or something. What can we give her to play with in it? So currently she's just washing um, her pots from her playhouse. <laughs> but you are enjoying the sieve. The sieve is going down well. And the pasta strainer thing. Mummy might have to put her feet in this. It's lovely. It's nice and cold, isn't it? Two of Oh, you want to put your feet in? Yep. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I don't know how long it's been. What would, What was your guess? Three minutes? I said three minutes. Okay, three I reckon minutes. it's been about five minutes. Okay. She's just sat in it. You've not even got a waterproof nappy on. That is going to balloon up. Oh no, don't drink it, Otty. It's got soil in <laughs> Let it. Let me show them. <laughs> Is that nice? Do you want me to sit in this one? Yeah. <laughs> Mummy won't fit in there. Oh no. Don't you think just like being a kid is just so much fun? Like me and Joe used to do this. Like of course she's gonna get in it. Oh! <laughs> she also just like, as when you're a kid you just don't feel the cold. No. Like that would be freezing. They don't care. Like, you want them all in with you? I do wish we were still like that, like that level of, I don't know, just yeah, just like, but like why not just make that noise? <laughs> no hat. Should we put the hat in the water? Oh, daddy. Very daddy. 
silly daddy. Yeah, hat in the water. Put it in the other oh. water if you want. Uh oh. Look, now if you put this on your head, ready? Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Put the hat in that water if you want. This one. Yeah. Wow, what is? Is that nice and cool? <laughs> Currently getting a little bit of shade in Otty's little play tent. It's quite tight in here, I have to say. I've not really been able to like get out and enjoy the lovely weather. So the fact that I'm now starting to feel better and we've still got some really glorious weather is lovely but shade is required today i really like afternoons where we just potter in the garden and play and there's no real like agenda or there's nothing that we have to do it's just very chilled like this is like my favorite start to the weekend i love it hello <laughs> Hello! What have you got me? Oh wow, that's so beautiful. It reminds me of autumn. Are you coming in? Oh, you're soaked! Look who's snuck in here with me. We've got the right idea, haven't we, Nala? Oh! Oh, are you coming in as well? Nala is... <laughs> She gets so hot, but she also gets FOMO, so she can never decide if she wants to go inside and miss out or just be too hot outside. Currently, she has chosen the latter. You need to go inside, girl. It's too hot for you out here. It's too hot for you. Oh, what have you found? Daddy. So, you may have seen in Alfie's vlog last week, week before, um, but Alfie bought a Ninja Creamy and this excited me a lot because i'd seen quite a few people using them and i just thought it looked so cool um so alfie and i made you made like a coffee protein one and i made a strawberry and raspberry one and it was so good like we boshed that i think it was one of my favorite ice creams i've ever had in my life it was I'm really not even good yeah but like, was... i would pay for it in a a little ice cream shop on the beach. We thought, let's try and make some more. But this time, we're going a bit more rogue. I feel like the strawberry and raspberry was quite easy. Why but this time, so we're fuzzy? fully going for it. I feel like when, when we tried it the other day, it was just like the first attempt. It was like we were testing it out, really. And it worked so well. Yeah. So this time, it's like, okay, well, let's make some, like, tiramisu ice cream. Let's buy an actual tiramisu and see if we can... Turn Make it into it work. something. <laughs> and my mum also said, oh, um, my favourite ice cream flavour is chocolate chip, mint choc chip, which is also one of yours. My favourite as well. Um, so I'm going to attempt to also make some mint choc chip, which I think is obviously a little bit more complex. Um, the recipe that I followed for my strawberry and raspberry was one cup of double cream, one teaspoon of golden syrup, so maybe if you get the golden syrup out. I feel like it was a lot of sugar. I think we could go a bit lighter on the sugar, if I'm honest. We also used normal sugar. We last used granulated, time. and I think I'd like to use caster because the granulated was very bit like you could like crunch it. Quite a lot of texture going yeah, on. Yeah, so we're just gonna like adapt. Uh, it's like a semi-freestyle. We've got experience from last time, but equally not a lot of experience. <laughs> Also, I do feel like with these things, you just keep trying. Like, yeah. we can work out, you know, what works best. But, should we do a tiramisu one first? Because I feel like that's just easy. That's just chopping up some tiramisu with a bit of cream. Also, I just don't think any of this could taste bad. Like, tiramisu and cream, and cream yeah. blended into ice cream. But, you want, you, but, you, but you want it to be ice creamy that's, well, that's up to the machine true one of the things that i have discovered is that a lot of the ninja creamy recipes are american so there's a lot of um jello just different things that we don't quite have the same over here she's trying to look quite a lot of jello mix and it kind of looks like the thing that you would make jelly from but they put it in the ice cream i don't know why 
Yeah, so I, at the moment I am struggling to find like UK recipes oh, with like UK yeah. ingredients and UK measurements. So if you know of anywhere, let me know. Oh my. I'm like on a fitness trying to. How much tiramisu versus cream? I maybe just fill the rest up with cream now to the maximum line. Oh my. I don't think we can even have that in the free in the freezer. Why are we making it? Because I'm gonna eat that. I'm gonna eat all of it. I what? won't be able to stop myself. One thing, Alfie. I'm gonna put a bit of milk too, just, <laughs> just for like, just, just for, just be a little bit healthy. Well, no, not to be healthy, but just I'm joking. a lot of people add milk with their cream. I don't really know why. That's gonna be really the most delicious thing you've ever had in your life. I'm gonna do one teaspoon. Of pasta sugar, two teaspoons, because mm. it's yeah. already got sugar in the. Yeah, it probably doesn't have enough sugar already. It would be good to add some more. Look, I think this is why the other one tasted so good. And mine tasted like a protein shake. Was it a tablespoon of golden syrup last time, or a teaspoon? I think. Well, it was into this. Yeah. Whoa, that tastes almost alcoholic. They usually do. Has it got alcohol in it? Yeah, they sometimes soak the. Um, that tastes like it. So the last recipe that we did with the strawberries and raspberries required oh the American goodness. version of golden syrup. And now I don't want to not use it in case that's what like binds it all together really well. I don't know. Hello, mommy, dad. Hello, Hello. Otty. So when I looked up mint ice cream, a lot of people use real mint leaves and I can see the appeal. And I do feel like my mum would prefer that if I'm honest. So I'm just going to use the leaves, no see stems, sit down. and hope that when it when we blend it tomorrow or Sunday, it will blend the leaves. Because the last thing you want is leaves in your ice cream. Do you know what I mean? What do you smell this? Hmm, smell this. I bet it will go on that. Smell it. Hmm. Was it one cup of cream last time? I feel like you found the recipe online last time. How much chocolate in a mint chocolate chip? Because you want, will the blender blend this chocolate? Yeah. When it's frozen? everything's frozen anyway, yeah. I think quite your strawberries is, were frozen. You, oh yeah, true. Because you want it to be like that, don't you, innit? Like the shards. Yeah. Do you want me to do some sugar? Yeah. How much? Do a quarter cup. A quarter cup? A quarter cup. That's a third cup. A third cup then. Feels like a lot, but that's how much we put in. Actually, we put half a cup in. We put in a little bit more just to be just to be safe. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of American peppermint. Just a tiny bit. Because this is strong. And then even though the leaves are gonna be mixed in, I feel like I've put too many leaves in. I am gonna do a little bit of coloring. Did you hear her? Daddy loves what? Pip and Posy? Oh, she put Pip and Posy on, she went, yeah, Daddy loves that. There we go, that is the, oh, do you mind scooping, like, try it. Well, I was not expecting it to taste like that. That's really good. Well, is that not looking good or what? Are we or are we not just opening up an ice cream parlor? Right, mint and chocolate chip. And for those watching, give it 10 seconds and it'll be ready for you. <laughs> We've got to wait till tomorrow. Yeah. Good morning, everybody been a while since I've sat here so I'm about to sit and do my hair you will have to excuse the chaos behind me I've been going through Otty's old clothes which is very cute very nostalgic and deciding what I'm gonna keep for the new baby also I feel like in my previous pregnancy my voice got quite deep and over the course of today I've noticed I can feel the strain on my voice box and I'm like ah is this about to start happening again where my voice goes like a couple of like octaves lower? Who knows? You, I might sound exactly the same to you. 
I might just be pointing it out and now you're like, oh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Maybe it's because I've done quite a lot of talking today already. <laughs> yeah, I just then as I started talking, I was like, oh, I can like feel it. <laughs> as I said, gonna sit and do my hair with you. And today I'm using one of my favorite new tools, the GHD Duet Style. So if you have been living under a rock and you don't know what this is, this is the first two in one hot air styler, which can take your hair from wet to completely dry and styled only using this. I have actually done a little video over on my Instagram, but if you haven't seen that and you are interested, I'm gonna use it today. I've actually been using this through my first trimester. This was the only thing I was using to do my hair, which was a rare occasion, I have to say. But on those rare occasions, I would wash my hair and then have to go and sit down. <laughs> And then I would plug this in next to my bed and I would sit in my bed and I would dry my hair like this whilst watching TV nice and easy and then I would also turn on the hot plates and I would style my hair using the same tool so this has been an absolute lifesaver for me these past couple of months the technology used within the duet style means there is no damage and also locks in a lot of moisture like I have not had sleek hair like it. If I want like ultimate like sleek, soft, shiny hair, this does just that. I use this a lot just for straight hair, um, but you can also use it just to style your hair as you normally would. So today I'm gonna do some waves. You wanna start out with towel dried hair. Haven't brushed through it as you can see. Um, so I'll give it a little brush through. I'm also gonna use the GHD Sleek Talker, which is the wet to sleek styling oil. This stuff is incredible. I love it. So I'm gonna run some of this through my fingers and then pop that in my hair as well. Okay all ready to go first thing you need to do is just turn it on one of the things i said on my instagram was that it was so much quieter than a hair dryer and it didn't sound like it in my video but it really is like i can have normal conversations with people i can watch tv shows i can chat i can like speak to otty this is way less loud than a hair dryer. I'm gonna separate my hair and then I am gonna go over my hair in sections. Take a section. And you wanna hold it at the root for like three seconds. And then drag it down. As you can see, that is already like half dry. So I reckon it takes like three goes over the same piece of hair for it to be like fully dry, depending on how big the pieces are that you take. Okay, I am now gonna go over my whole, this section, and I'll time lapse you. First layer done, totally dry, soft and gorgeous. Right, let's go in with the last layer. Okay, just had like a mad couple of minutes. The door went, Nala was scratching here, <laughs> but I'm back. God, so sorry if the angle's changed. My bra's slipping off, goodness me, anyway. Hair up, let's curl. So I pop the duet style into shine shot mode. So when it's just turned on, just as it's like blowing the air, you just hold this down and then it activates the heat plates inside. Um, so obviously these plates are like slightly wider. So the wave will be a little bit more loose, a little bit more kind of beachy. <laughs> okay, one section done move on to the last section i have to say doing it with this is much quicker obviously a much looser wave than if you were to use your regular ghd styler to do your um waves or curls or if you were to use the tong um but i 
kind of like how quick it is. It's much, much quicker because of the size of it. So a little bit of a looser wave, but also a little more time efficient. <laughs> We are done. Right, I'm gonna turn this off now. So I am already a fan of the duet style, but if you would like to try it for yourself, then I actually have two to give away, one for you and one for a friend. All you have to do is leave a comment down below um, why you and a friend would love to be treated to a duet style. It is obviously a more considered purchase, so if it's something that you wanna give a try, then definitely go down below. And leave a comment all of the information regarding the giveaway and the t's and c's will be over on the ghd website so i'll leave a link to that as well so do make sure you go over and check that out and i have no doubts that you will love it as much as i do right it is warm today and i don't know why i decided to put this on <laughs> but i am after doing my hair i am now sweating i have been absolutely obsessed with the traitors Australia it's on iPlayer at the moment and oh my god I've just finished watching the last episode and my mouth was open the whole time I think Traitors has to be up there with one of my favorite reality tv style programs I love that it's not around love I feel like there's so many around love and like I love that it's a bit more of a game um and that it's quite psychological and that there are so many different types of characters. And I just feel like the, the plot and the way it's produced and just, I honestly, if you have something that you wanna watch at the moment, you have to watch The Traitors because oof, when I tell you that last episode, in fact, the UK one, the US one, and this one, all of the last episodes, I've been like, oh my gosh, and I'm really excited that they're doing a U another UK one because it's just such a good concept. I love it. If you do watch it, would you wanna be a traitor or would you wanna be a faithful? I think I would be gone in two seconds if I was either. <laughs> I don't think I would last long in that game slash program at all. I think I would be terrible both ways. I do, however, think I'd be a much better faithful. I think I'm really good at reading body language and I have this weird thing that I've always said I've got where I just know where pe when people are lying to me or when people are lying, I can just tell. I think I'm quite an empath, therefore I read people very deeply um, and I just feel like I'd be quite good at that. Although I think maybe I would overanalyze potentially. I'd be like, oh, that person looked away at this time. And actually, when there's like so many people, it's probably quite hard to do. But I think I, I think my skills would be better geared toward being a faithful. And I have to say, I have so much admiration for the people that get allocated as traitors because it, it must just be like instant stress. <laughs> To be like, okay, I have to think about every single thing I'm doing all the time. Actually, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to give anything away. But basically, if you don't watch The Traitors, there's a UK version, a US version, and an Australian version. I think maybe they're all available on iPlayer right now. Watch them all. They're all slightly different. I feel like they all have a slight variation. Um on the UK traitors. The Australian version did have a very different ending to the UK one. I kind of like the dramatics of the UK one. I like the fire and the like red and green. They didn't have that in the uh, Australian one, but that does not mean it wasn't as suspenseful and tense and shocking because it was. Just thought I would chat to you about that because I've been thoroughly enjoying it. And if you need a TV recommendation, watch it. Right, get me out of this hot room. Just come into the bedroom because it's nice and cool in here. And um, look at this delivery that we've just had. It's from Crumbs and Doilies. Am I gonna be able to show you this without like dropping them everywhere? Probably not. Look at those brownies. Oh my gosh. So they do deliveries of brownies and cookies, I wanna say, and I have tried both 
and both are incredible. These are the flavours. Cornflake brownie, which is a personal favourite of mine, which is why, I don't know if you noticed, but that one has been half eaten. The Biscoff brownie, the cookie dough brownie, the Bueno brownie, the Millionaire's brownie. Oh my god, there's so many. The Classic brownie, the Banana blondie, the Raspberry white and the Chocolate blondie. Thank you so much Crumbs and Doilies. They sent it as a little like congratulations, which is so, so sweet. Um, it's like they knew that one of my biggest cravings is like anything chocolatey. So like a brownie, a chocolate cake, anything like that is what I have really wanted in this pregnancy, which is odd because it is the opposite of what I wanted with my pregnancy with Otty. Um, because the idea of a chocolate brownie in my first trimester with Otty was like the worst thing you could have offered me. <laughs> but completely the opposite in this one, which is so, so strange. But both pregnancies a real heavy sweet craving. There was not a day where I craved something salty, which is very interesting. Also one of the reasons I knew I was having a girl again, because it was just, there was just too many things that were so similar, like the bad skin, the like rapid hair growth, and then the like hair growth stopped. Um, the sweet cravings, the same level of nausea. Oh, there was just, there were so many similarities and some differences, but a lot of similarities. Um, but we will get into that. We will get into that in my first trimester video. For now, um, I am gonna do a little bit of work on the laptop. Alfie is actually in the office today. Otty is having a day with her nanny and granddad, which is very cute and means that Alfie and I can like get some work done. I have a lot to catch up on. <laughs> I basically haven't done anything for two months. Um, so I have a lot of work I need to like get back on top of, which feels a little bit daunting. Um, I wouldn't say I'm like back up to 100% yet. So it does feel a little bit like, oh, how am I gonna go? But I'm just taking it day by day, day by day. And today I felt good. So I was like, let's get on it. <laughs> I'm gonna have a little bit of time on the laptop and then I will get back to you. What? <laughs> this camera height. Oh no, it does work for you. Yeah. Sorry, not you. You, you come here. <laughs> this is the problem I have with you and Mark. Like, you just don't fit in my perfect height I'll range. Take my shoes off as well. Well, that's not adding much. No, I'll lean down. Okay. So I said in one of my previous clips that you guys don't have to wait long to see the ice cream. But in fact, days have gone past and we've actually already eaten half of this one. <laughs> they also didn't get to see the machine working its magic. No, but can I just say it worked it really time. well. Worked really good. They both good. worked really well. So this is the tiramisu one, which I would actually say is my favorite. Mm -hmm. I do like mint chocolate chip, but it's not my favorite ice cream flavor. Wait, are we going to try these now, even though we've both already tried yeah, both let's of just, them? Yeah, let's just give our, like, um, <laughs> overall out of five. You Your mum and dad tried this, and they loved yeah, it. Yeah, that's Otty loved it, and I gave half of this to my mum, obviously, because we made it for her initially. And she loved it too. It's just so good. Oh. But it can't not be, because it is... 80% of a tiramisu cake with cream. That's it. I'm gonna give that four out of five. I thought you were about to say out of 10. I was like, you are joking me. <laughs> four out of five. Mm. Are we only running out of five? Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. Why? Why would you not rate out of 10? Four out of... I'm gonna rate that a five out of seven. <laughs> I'm gonna rate that. 16 out of 20. <laughs> I'm gonna rate this. <laughs> Actually stop me now, because I'll just keep going. <laughs> That's why I'm already down here, because I'm like, I'm just passing time. Okay. Once you say a joke and Zoe finds it funny. <laughs> I just keep going. She just keeps going and going. The only thing I don't like about mint chocolate chip is, I went fancy with like a dark fancy chocolate, and I just don't really like dark chocolate. So like, getting those bits of dark chocolate like in my teeth, I'm like, Bleh. 
I'd give this a three though. Out of five. Out of what? Out of, out of five. Because it's still tasty. I prefer that. Like that still tastes like a mint chop chip that I would have anywhere. Mm hmm. But I personally. Oh, this is unreal. That's not the ice cream I would ever pick if I was to go and buy it and like order an ice cream somewhere. Right, I have just come upstairs. I'm very out of breath. But I'm about to take off my makeup and get ready for bed. So I thought we'd sit down and chat you through the old anxiety chat. Oh my god, you scared me. Um, I don't know if this angle is. I can tell you're vlogging. I think what I might do is a Q and A. Um, if you have any questions at all, because I do feel like I can touch on this a bit, but some of you might have more questions or you might want to know about something in particular in a bit more depth. But, um, I did have a smidge of anxiety in my first trimester with Otty, but I feel like that was quite fleeting. And then I remember in my, I want to say, was it my second trimester video? Um, I think I even answered a question in a Q&A that was like, how's your anxiety been and in my second trimester with Otty it was almost like anxiety wasn't a thing I know that your body releases so many different hormones and one of those hormones is like a relaxant to obviously relax your body in order for it to stretch and grow to grow your baby and I do wonder whether that had an effect and whether that kicking in in the second trimester actually helps things because I do remember thinking like I feel weirdly fine and weirdly relaxed like I feel like I need to be more um anxious if anything like with the birth coming up and stuff however in this pregnancy my anxiety uh really ramped up um and obviously I know I'm saying this and there will be people watching this whose anxiety is far far worse than mine and I can only really talk about my own experience versus the anxiety that I've had for like the majority of my life. Um, so that's all I can really go on. I'm, I by no means I'm saying that, you know, this is the worst thing in the world or that this has made my pregnancy like the worst pregnancy ever. It really isn't that. It's just compared to the level of anxiety that I have been used to, it was off the scale. I actually think it was possibly the worst my anxiety has ever ever been and that is saying something because I'm 33 years old and I have been um, dealing with anxiety since like I was a kid and actually like seeking professional help since I was about 18, 19. I feel like in my life life manual i've never experienced anything like it and it was quite sudden now as a bit of backstory i'm sure a lot of you watching this already know this but i have been having anxiety and panic attacks since i was very very young um i can probably even go back and like pinpoint anxiety attacks as a child like i, I have quite clear vivid memories of feeling really uncomfortable in situations feeling unwell and wanting to leave um and now as an adult i can see that that was probably an anxiety attack as like a five-year-old um obviously when you're five you don't realize those things i became fully aware of having anxiety and panic attacks around the age of like 15 16 and they got worse as i got older in a very tiny nutshell obviously there is a lot to unpack and there's no way I could ever do that in like this video my anxiety stems from a phobia of being sick slash sick feeling trapped with a real sense of people pleasing so all those three things are very intertwined so like my worst case scenario would be being in an airport starting to feel anxious feeling sick, being sick in front of people, feeling embarrassed, letting people down, um, and like like trapping myself in those situations, thinking like, oh, I, I can't let that person down, or I must make this meeting because I don't wanna let that person down. That's a really bad way of explaining it, but basically those three things are like the, um, the catalyst, let's say, of the anxiety. But I think if we strip it right, 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 right back, it's the, trauma and fear of um being sick knowing this and being pregnant and going into my first trimester is quite terrifying 
and I would be lying if I said I strolled into a second pregnancy really raring to go and excited because I definitely didn't. I basically ripped off the plaster and I was like, there is no amount of time that will pass for me to ever feel okay about the prospect of feeling sick or being sick in the first trimester. I just have to do it. I just have to like rip the plaster off and just do it. I've done it once before, I can do it again. So really I didn't think about it too much because I knew if I thought about it too much I probably wouldn't want to do it. So I've got like, you know, the normal nausea, which I'm saying that really lightly. I found it very, very hard. Every single day I was battling with my biggest phobia every single day. And I could feel the anxiety building, um, which obviously doesn't help because when you feel very anxious, one of the biggest side effects of anxiety is nausea. So I was like doubling on top of pregnancy nausea with anxiety nausea and I couldn't differentiate which was different and I just felt very trapped in nausea and there was like no relief from it no matter what I did. So that was very hard and it was like that for like between weeks six and 10, 11. And then I feel like around nine and 10, I had like a bit of a like, oh, I'm starting to feel a bit better. And I kind of got dressed and like went into the garden and like, I, you know, like went to mum's and I was able to like do a couple of things. And I was thinking like, oh great, this is going really well. Even talking about it is like, I can feel like <sighs> the anxiety is like rising. Then by about week 11, 10, 11, somewhere at the end of 10, start of 11, I suddenly developed this very strange, what at the time I thought was just a symptom, where I gagged at everything. I would spend the day gagging, like I would, I would roll over like this to get my drink off the bedside table and I would gag. I would sit up in bed and I would gag. And obviously with every gag, my anxiety is rising. And then I would say it was about a week of that and just me being like, what is happening? Like this must just be a pregnancy thing. It, I didn't feel as though I was having, like that was on the verge of a panic attack. I definitely knew my anxiety was bad because my heart rate was constantly very, very high. And at one point I looked in the mirror and I could see my pulse like this in my neck and I'd never noticed anything like that before. And I was like, Alfie, look at this, this is so strange. But I didn't feel physically, I didn't really feel any different. It was very, very bizarre. Anyway, we get to a point where we need to go to my 12 week appointment and everything I'm trying to do to get ready for this appointment I'm gagging, I'm retching, I'm crying, I'm sitting on the floor, I'm like, I can't do this, I can't leave the house. And it got to a point where I wouldn't really even leave the bed because everything I did, I was gagging, which was then spiraling like, oh my God, I'm gonna be sick, like, what is this? And it was that day where we were halfway to my appointment and I just had like a massive panic attack and I was like, I can't go, turn around, I can't go. Came home and I was like, I feel like I know what this might be. It was weird, it was like my brain just like, for a split second, my conscious brain took over my subconscious brain. And I was like, I think this is the same as, so the only other time I can ever recall having a very heightened sense of anxiety to the point where it's very, very uncomfortable is going on an aeroplane, which I've always found quite tricky and there have been times where my anxiety has been so intense but instead of having a panic attack it's like I start like retching it's like a bodily reaction like I can't help it and basically what had happened was that I had got myself into a constant state of like extreme level anxiety to the point where my subconscious was just rolling with it every single day and my conscious was a bit like, oh, this is a weird symptom, or well, what's going on here? And then when I managed to like work it out, I could start then working on it with my therapist and like to try and like dismantle everything that happened. I had to take it very, very easy because I was basically living at this like constant 
high alert state of anxiety. There was about three weeks where I wasn't really doing anything. I wasn't seeing anyone. I wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't doing anything. Um, and then I started working with my therapist a lot more and just trying to break down the anxiety and kind of prove to myself that it's not real by doing all these things and yes you might gag but you haven't been sick so like I just kept trying really hard to do the things and prove to myself this isn't real this is all in your mind this is just an overactive state of anxiety like you just need to like bring it down and it finally got to a point where I could leave the house or I could sit in the garden like it sounds so wild but like that was genuinely what my life my life had become so tiny like I just everything outside of this bedroom I couldn't do and then eventually it was like oh I came downstairs and I helped in the kitchen or I managed to go outside and I managed to go into town or go to the office or like all these little things I was just like ticking off and everyone I ticked off even though it was so so hard and so frustrating because I'm like how was I so capable of doing these things two months ago and now I can't do anything which I think is partly one of the biggest things that flawed me in this because I've obviously worked for years on my anxiety to get it to a point where I'm mostly able to live my life how I want to live it and that's something I'm always very proud of that I've worked for so many years um, to try and be able to do the things that I previously found really hard and then all of a sudden so so quickly it all just went it was like I had to start from scratch again. Um, thankfully, because I have worked for years, I was able to do it quite quickly. I was able to like build it back up quite quickly. I've done it before, like I know what I'm doing. And I was very determined, but it was definitely a challenge. It was very, very hard. Like there is absolutely no way I would have been able to get through that without Alfie or my friends my family because everyone was so supportive and like sending me voice notes and just like checking in and being like we'll come to you don't worry like you you just do what you need to do and we we can either be there or we cannot be there which I found so refreshing and like so helpful in a nut I'm saying in a nutshell I've been talking for 15 minutes whilst Alvi's been lying on the floor waiting to get into bed <laughs> but that is in a very quick nutshell basically what happened so I wouldn't even I wouldn't even say the symptoms differed much from Otty's pregnancy I wouldn't say the actual pregnancy symptoms were were worse it was that the anxiety had attached so quickly so extremely um that that did not happen in Otty's pregnancy that's not happened to me at all like ever in my life the only time I've ever like retched from anxiety was in an airport like twice in my life and that's sadly and frustratingly for me that my body chooses to do that when it's in a high level of anxiety I'm like why would you why would the emetophobe have gagging as like my body's way of being like we're not safe <laughs> like we're too anxious I'm like what are the chances some people faint some people actually throw up some people will just get like hot sweats like anxiety is a very very physical thing like your body reacts so extremely sometimes um it doesn't happen for everybody but there, yeah there will be some people who get into that like heightened state of anxiety and faint or like I don't know don't see straight or get dizzy or like there's so many so many variations mine is to gag and I just feel like either that's because I'm so scared of it and that's like subconsciously where my mind goes or that's just really shit luck for someone who has a metaphobia I don't know but yeah it was that but like all day every day for weeks um and it was weird because it was like I knew I had to try and calm down but it just felt so impossible I had to give myself that time which is really difficult when you're also battling with like the guilt that you can't like help 
you can't do anything. Like I couldn't help Alfie with Otty much. Um, and I couldn't like, I couldn't work. I wasn't doing any work. I had to put a lot of brands on hold and like, there was a lot of guilt intertwined which with my people pleasing wasn't great <laughs> um because i would then start to like panic more that i'm not like not being helpful and that i'm not able to like do what i did before even though i knew this wasn't going to be forever it's still really hard in that moment to not be frustrated and disappointed in yourself and i think that was one of the main things i had to really try and let go of because the more frustrated and annoyed I got with myself the more I was like cementing that it was real if that makes any sense trying to like not be frustrated at all the things I couldn't do and actually just like celebrating all the things I could I think at one point I started like making a list of all the things I was able to do in a day that like I hadn't been able to do got dressed and put deodorant on was downstairs all morning like it's even wild for me now to look back at this this was a month ago um and be like whoa because now these things are so normal to me again. Sat in the garden with Mark and Alfie. Got up and came downstairs. I did not have as much time upstairs today. Like, it starts off really, like, tame. And then, obviously, I was doing more and more and more, so I just stopped. I'm going to stop now. But if you have any questions, then do let me know. Because I feel like it's probably one of those things where pregnancy can really exasperate like there's so much going on in your body there's so many hormones and there's so much going on in your mind and it just feels like a lot like it can feel very overwhelming especially when it's like you're the one that's doing it you're the one that's like carrying the load the like mental load the physical load so I just wanted to like talk about it in case there was anybody watching this who was in their first trimester or who has experienced something similar or just somebody who's like worked really hard on their anxiety and they're at a really good point and then it all just comes crashing down just to I guess offer some reassurance and just to say that you're not alone and also mental health in pregnancy. I don't see many people talking about it. I see quite a lot of people talking about postpartum um, and how that can affect you and your mental health. But I feel like in actual pregnancy, I don't see as much conversation about it. So I was really keen to share that side of it because for me, especially this time, that's been the, the biggest struggle and hurdle to get over. So I hope you found that interesting. If you managed to get to the end of this, then <laughs> Thank you so much. Leave a little heart somewhere in your comment. Um, don't forget to enter the giveaway if you want to. Um, and I'm gonna leave this here. But like I said, if you have any questions, I'll probably do a questions box on Instagram at some point, but also leave some down below. And I'm sure over the next couple of vlogs, I will get to you and answer some of them. But yeah, I hope that wasn't too like rambly. <laughs> and made some sense. It's always very hard to explain these things because they make so much sense in my head, <laughs> but I don't know if they actually make sense when I say them out loud. Anyway, good night. I hope you enjoyed the vlog and I will see you again soon. Bye.